My name is Mike V, a.k.a. Phony. Today's date is January 20th, 2023. I am joined today again by my lovely co-hosts, Chat. We just had a great conversation about bats and <laughs> poor Sir David Attenborough <laughs> pulling a John Madden. <laughs> <laughs> we are quite lovely. Yes, 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 you guys are. So today, it's like the second news this week. We still have lots. We still have lots. We're going to try to get through some of this as quickly as possible. <clears throat> okay, not too quick. Not too quick. But some of these things, some of these stories are like, there's, there's touch-ups. We, we're going to you know, kind of touch and base with some of these things again. For example, we have an update. From Watsi, it says, hey everyone, the survey for OGL 1.2 feedback is now live. If you missed it, they did already release uh, yesterday, which is a day premature. Remember today was supposed to be the day they released both the new OGL for feedback as well as the survey. Uh, and the OGL 1.2 draft that they pu published, which I'm not even gonna show you because it's a draft. <laughs> but it goes on and it talks about a few things. But really, it doesn't matter because for a lot of folks, for a lot of folks, the non-starter uh, starts at them basically removing all of OGL uh, 1.0A, like basically shit canning it. So <clears throat> for that already, it's a non-starter. And in most of the comments that you see, uh, it says, folks, make sure you provide informed. Uh, make sure you provide informed feedback. Don't revoke OGL 1.0a. Make OGL 1.2 truly irrevoc irrevocable and royalty free. Give creators right to defend against bad faith, morality, cause claims, and don't suppress VTTs, virtual tabletops, and use a standard uh, sever uh, severability clause. So one of the issues that people had with this is, uh, uh, and we mentioned it before. They're trying to kind of lean into the, well, we don't want our platform to be used for uh, uh, for unsavory things. And that could that's a wide range. It could be uh, <clears throat> it could be uh, racism. It could be hate stuff in general, uh, just all kinds of stuff. So they don't want their platform used for that stuff. So they're leaning into that pretty hard. I don't know if this is like a rampant thing or something, right, where they have to reel it in. To me, it just seems like, they're just trying to like find a way in to make these changes. Oh, we have to do it. Think about the children. One of those types of things, right? <laughs> Jesus. Think about the fake children in these campaigns. <laughs> you play DD at all, you owe us your souls. Proving they satanic panic, right? <clears throat> so they have released their uh, their survey. A lot of people are saying that it uh, it's broke. It doesn't work. So would you provide feedback and open and see? Yes, we'll provide feedback. Say next. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and say next. And then let's see after reading, I'm just going next, next, next. Because people are saying that it doesn't work. I don't play it enough to give my feedback. So I'm just going to go ahead and just skip through some of this stuff. It's a pretty robust to see. How would you rate your level of understanding and your level of satisfaction with virtual tabletop policy? Okay, good. See, have you used OGL 1.0a or uh, or previous versions of OGL to create third-party content? See, I don't. This doesn't apply to me at all. Uh, do you want to create third-party content? Uh, you can save your answers and go back, submit, and then it says thank you for taking the survey. Your feedback is crucial. Okay, there we go. So the results of the survey, perfect. We made it available February seventeenth, two thousand and twenty-three. So some folks are saying that they're having issues initially, and that's why I wanted to just do that do that live, just so you could see that it does or does not work. Uh, and some people are saying that you know it doesn't work, so it works now. They're collecting feedback. February seventeenth, we're gonna come back and take a look and see what that feedback is. Uh, <clears throat> this might be guys fine with it, so we went ahead. I know. Did I just fuck everything up? <laughs> So, so that's where that's where we're at right now with this. There's not a whole lot to to touch on that we haven't already talked about ten times over um, over the past few days. Just in time for that Friday's news. That's right, just in time, just in time, and not a whole lot to really talk about it. So, I mean, actually, you know, if we want to kind of dive, dive into the tweets here, it says right here, hateful and harmful content is hard to define. It says that we know it's a sense. We know this is a sensitive top, top, topic, sorry. Uh, we're, we're taking it and your input seriously. We will clarify the language around this in the next draft and encourage your specific feedback on the survey. Uh, we understand there is a spectrum between virtual tabletops and they go on to other subjects and everything. But for the most part, like I said, the non-starter is the fact that they are going to uh, be, um, uh, I guess, nullifying the original. And that's where people are like, nope, not happening. And <clears throat> this has given a lot of people time 
to really consider what they want to do with their their existing campaigns and platforms and uh if they want to switch to blank or whatever so the more the longer this takes the more business they end up losing because of lack of good faith so february 17th is still i mean that's a little over a month away so that's a lot of time for people to either find somewhere else to go or just forget and maybe even us here will we'll review the results, the release, their updated 1.2 uh, OGL, and we'll just be so tired and fatigued from like from hearing about this damn story. They'll just be like, all right, well, you know what? We lost. And we keep taking L's like that from all these different companies, and we end up with shit like fucking loot boxes and all kinds of predatory like behaviors from these companies because eventually they just wear us out, and we're just like, ugh, fine. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I just want to play your game. And then pretty soon there's no games left to play. <laughs> Speaking of. Next up, loop, loop, loop boxes are now always mimics. So uh, there was uh, some more layoffs. This is... Uh, this is speaking of layoffs, I guess this is where this starts. So some more layoffs. This one at uh, Google slash uh, Alphabet. Actually, it's Google, I think, specifically, because they specifically call it Google, Googlers, all that good stuff. Uh, and it's 12,000 roles, or 12,000 people that they're laying off. Um, and they already sent an email. And as a matter of fact, I actually have a copy of that email here, uh, so you could see. It's a very generic, plain email. But a lot of people, because they work remotely, they got the notice this way. Notice regarding your employment. <laughs> God, I would hate. Hey, 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 to get a notice like that in my email. <laughs> Dear Blank, we have some difficult news to share. We are reducing our workforce and are very sorry to tell you that your role is impacted and we no longer have a job for you at Google. I'm sure there's probably a lot of other like HR links and everything below. Here's what you do about this. Here's what you do about that. It seems very turt purse here, but there's probably more. I mean, they probably didn't say anything else. They're not going to like you know, be like, we're really sorry this happened. They're not going to say any of that shit. <laughs> Everything else is just HR stuff that they cut out. <laughs> I was say I was thinking the same thing, Talk. It's like, is this the corporate version of breaking up by text? That's what I thought. I was just like, is this... <laughs> it's standard practice, though. Like, this is standard practice. Uh, that would give me huge email PTSD forever moving forward. But this is like the way it works now. Like, so many people work remotely. And plus, there's 12,000 people. And there's only so many people in HR. They can't like line them up and have them all come in individually. You know, they have to do like a gathering or something like that. And even then, they're not going to get 12,000 people gathered anywhere. <laughs> so they're just going to email it. It's very impersonal now. There's no, yeah, all that. We're just, we're just numbers. You guys know that. We're just numbers. Just numbers. Uh, they were jealous that Microsoft took the spotlight with their layoffs or they know that this is the good time to do it, right? This is, I heard somebody say that this was the week, this is the week of layoffs. Um, and we'd see a lot of them. And I think it has something to do with the, uh, uh, with the fiscal year, either ending, beginning, whatever. So <clears throat> that's what it seems like. It's like, this is their opportunity to at the last second, make some changes. And then they could go to their shareholders and be like, Hey, look at all this money we're saving. Uh, by the way, I, I think we read that, uh, like yesterday or whatever, didn't Google, like Google's making like billions of dollars. So <laughs> they can't afford these people. They can't afford these people. You made it. You made it. You didn't, you didn't get laid off today. Yeah. But black, black actually knows somebody at Google got laid off. That's how many people that are impacted. Um, to be fair, Google cannot just use Microsoft teams to tell their employees. That's a rival company. I thought you were going to say they laid all those people off too or something. <laughs> the people that manage those licenses internally. <laughs> Uh, ADS, 30,000 employees in 2020 just to lay off one third. Yeah, so that's the other thing. A lot of people are saying that there's, um, <clears throat> that they're doing uh, lots of hiring. I think Wovie and somebody else in my comments said something about, um, they do, they've done a lot of hiring over the past couple of years and now they're laying off, they're downsizing. Uh, a lot of the hiring, uh, and credit me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the hiring seems to be mostly centered around um, the big, the big, huge, like uh, boom that we saw during the pandemic, where these services, these online services, now became very, very, very necessary across the board. Like every online service is now being pushed to its maximum potential, and so you know the hiring process of bringing a lot of people on board and then shedding some of that later, uh, it's 
I mean, maybe that's the case. I don't know if that's the case with Google, but I feel like when you see company after company after company laying off and then you hear about other companies that are in a hiring freeze and they're not like you know, really bringing in a lot of people, it just seems to me like this is a bad re- this is a bad recipe here. You know, this is going to lead to something. Um, I mean, if, if, if the week is over, I guess, but you know, there's always the latecomers next week, you know, <clears throat> they laid off their stadia people. Yeah. Yeah, some people I work with with my company. I read some theories about the layoffs due to some law, tax law change in 2022 that retroactively hit companies that do R&D and how they get tax credits and that now increases their tax burdens. I mean, I'm sure at the very least we can we can all agree and be certain of the fact that they're doing this because money, right? Not because they're losing too much money, but because they can make more money. Of course, of course, of course. So <clears throat> Google, add that to the list. What do we have? We have uh, Microsoft. We have uh, Google. We have Amazon. Um, we have, oh shit, actually. Hold on. I got my, that's gonna be, let me just go to the next story. Speaking of layoffs, uh, we have Giant Bomb, uh, GameSpot. We knew though, <clears throat> we knew that this was going to happen. When, when we first reported about fandom uh, uh, picking up, Oh, Unity. If, well, Unity was 300 people, but still. Um, but we first reported that uh, Phantom was uh, purchasing you know, this whole network. Uh, we knew that this was going to happen. And this is about the time. Yeah, it's months, just several months, and they let some people go. Uh, last time also when I reported on it, it was uh, it was kind of met with lukewarm reception from from you guys here in chat. And I feel like I didn't really get a lot in the comments either. I'm not I'm not quite sure, but um, <clears throat> or I didn't remember seeing any. But it seems like most people have pretty much stopped giving a shit about Giant Bomb ages ago when their favorite people had already left. So uh, it still sucks, of course, for everybody that's involved. This is just, you know company was purchased and then purchased and then purchased and then they're like let's go ahead and clean house we'll just keep the name we'll figure out what to do with it later whatever that might be so it's just not good giant who huh <laughs> uh speaking spit fucking venture capital yeah speaking of layoffs <laughs> stop me if you heard this one speaking of layoffs jeez 343 Industries was heavily impacted by the uh, by the layoffs. I I've heard I've heard that it was uh, uh in on the uh, what is it like um 130 people. I don't know if that's necessarily in this article, but I read somewhere that it was 130 people at 343 Industries. Uh, if you're not familiar with 343, they make Halo games, as you can see by the title here. Um, and it says that they will oversee outside development now instead of working on Halo games directly. So this kind of makes it seem like 343 is now like a sub publisher, right? They're going to be managing other studios and helping guide and direct them some of that. And, and then they're going to put out the game. So to me, it's kind of them functioning a little bit more like publishing. They're outsourcing. Yeah. Basically they're outsourcing, which outsourcing, outsourcing is, is that's just not a word. This has some negative connotations attached to it, right? This has a lot to do with how Infinite turned out. <clears throat> it cannot just be the layoffs on its own. Yeah, sure, yeah, ab- absolutely. I mean, we're seeing that too, actually. Uh, let me see. Uh, this is, here's here's something. This is like, speaking of like, you know, uh, uh, of outsourcing being kind of a negative term, here is somebody's take that I thought was kind of interesting and it makes sense. It says, it's only the right way. Halo is too big for 343 alone, needs to be treated like COD, multiple studio, giving fresh idea. And it's like, I get that, you know, like I don't, I don't play COD enough to know, but I know that COD has, you know, annual massive, uh, campaigns that they release that are just like deep voice, uh, cinematics, like they really go all out production wise in ways that there's no way they could have a churn of every single year from the same studio. So <clears throat> this could potentially be, uh, a good thing in the long term for Halo, if you're a Halo fan, uh, by having them bounce around. You get fresh ideas, uh, you get, I know fresh ideas and cut. okay, I'm sorry, but I'm just saying like, <laughs> we don't need a new Halo every year with only one and three, four, one and three or four being good. Well, that's what they're trying to, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying, <laughs> they're, they're trying to make it work somehow, I guess. Just, just hoe it out to whoever they can. I've seen good outsourcing and bad outsourcing. It really depends on how it's managed. Yeah, so what we'll probably see is um, Halo 
goes to blank studio right and it's and then then we're gonna look at other games that that studio has has built and figure out and then we'll have our own fun with it like okay is it gonna be a good halo is it gonna be a bad halo right somebody said something like um uh what if id what if id software did uh did the halo series um and it, and it may have been too soon to make that kind of comment because these people just got laid off but i mean if we're trying to just be if we're trying to just be uh, uh, just open about the future of a franchise, right? I mean, the layoffs are obviously fucking the worst. I'm, thousands happening every day. But um, <clears throat> if we're looking at the future of the Halo franchise, then it could be it could be good. Also, it could be bad. They could shelf it. They could just shelf it for the next, you know, I don't know how many years, and then bring it back in 20 years or something like that with some reboot or whatever. Um, there was some choice words here, though. This is senior multiplayer designer. Uh, Patrick Wren. Whoa, 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 whoa. What'd you say? What'd you say? Hold on a second. What the talk? What is this? <laughs> Hot take. I really enjoyed the Halo TV show. Can I wait for the next season? Did it get good or something? Or do you have to treat it not like a Halo show? Ban, ban her. I know you just pronouns attached to this thing, but still. Trash take right there. Dang, 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 dang. So, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from again this is senior multiplayer designer okay this ain't just no one okay it says the layouts of 343 should have happened and halo infinite should be in a better state the reason for both of those things is incompetent leadership up top during halo infinite development causing massive stress on those working hard to make halo the best that it can be B. So the people I work with every day were passionate about Halo and wanted to make something great for their fans. Uh, they helped push for a better Halo and got laid off for it. Dev's still there working hard on that dream. Look at Forge. Be kind to them during this awful time. Uh, <clears throat> and also note here, don't forget the heavy reliance on contractors slash vendors in that messed up system, though I know it's, well, it was more Microsoft. Uh, I would have loved to stay, but at the t uh, I'd love to stay on the team uh, if I could work uh, if I could work off and worked my way up. I'm uh, sorry, if I could have and worked my way up. I can't read today, I guess. Sorry. Uh, still one of my favorite jobs I've been at. And he says, oh man, the contract stuff is a whole other can of words that pisses me off. And he's actually already, somebody already mentioned it here uh, about how they're using contractors. And, you know, we did it too. Like when I was working in the private sector, like we would bring on contractors sometimes because it was a way, not necessarily to skip out on uh, taxes, but it was just an easy way to fill seats. Uh, just happen to also give us uh, a good out on taxes. But when that's your business model of just hiring contractors, then you're clearly trying to uh, trying to, to 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 circumvent certain tax laws and uh, and put that in your bottom line. But what happens is like you hire a bunch of people and they have 18 month contracts and they just disappear all at the same time, and that's effectively what's happening today. They're second class citizens of the corporal environment. Absolutely. Oh yeah, contractors in general for sure. Yeah, can you read any other day? Apparently not, man. Cheese, cheese, man. Car, what the heck? Um, <clears throat> Pierre, Pierre Hintz, who's the uh, he is the uh, head of Three Four Three Industries. Uh, this is just somebody just uh, speculating, and it's speculation that actually kind of makes sense. It says Pierre Hintz, studio head of Three Four Three, likely can't talk about the layoffs that happened yesterday as it's business decision uh, by Microsoft and out of his control. We should not expect a response about the people laid off. We probably will get a response about the people laid off, and probably from. Uh, uh, Pierre, but uh, I do believe that yeah, it's just like something that came down from the top, and and that's that's happened. I mean, that's happened to me in retail. Like basically, you just get an email, and it just says, "Hey, you need to lay off five staff," and that's like you know it. You know, it's like we need to lay off five staff because you're over payroll for the fiscal year 2006 retail budget or whatever. You know, and so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you could do you could fight if you want but then you get canned and put someone else in that will actually do it you know did I hear about the D&D &D backtrack there wasn't no backtrack yet they haven't officially put anything out yet um, unless that came out within the last two seconds uh, it was today's first story yeah there you go <clears throat> so so yeah it's 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 rough right now across the tech industry games industry uh, it's just layoffs I mean, layoffs, 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 and layoffs. It's just more layoffs this week. It's been really bad. Um, and, and it's not even this week. Like, there have been layoffs happening in the thousands over the past six six months or so. Um, and it's just a, continuing, it's just a continual thing. So I don't know if this is the market uh, as a whole, like, balancing itself out. 
I keep hearing about companies making billions and billions of dollars. Uh, you, the best, the, the be, what is it? Was it Microsoft or whatever, right? Microsoft's uh, CEO said something uh, yesterday or day for yesterday. It was something along the lines of how they had their, uh, or that was a quote that I read the other day, um, how they had the best fiscal year ever and they made $69 billion or whatever in revenue. And oh man, so much stuff. So much stuff. Uh, 31st Union is hiring. Reach out to Corey for that. <laughs> murders always have layoffs. When murders happen, they're laying off the overlapping merger brings. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, but there's no merger here in any of these stories that we're talking about. This is Google. Google hasn't merged with anybody. A lot of companies likely kept people on during COVID for both development and government money. Now the games have developed and they're overstaffed. Revenue does not equal profit, however. Oh, no, no, that's true. Revenue does not equal profit. But when you make $69 in, in, in revenue, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're spending $68 billion of it, right? Like you're... You're, you're making a lot of profit. <laughs> if all these companies are making so much money, then why do they keep prices so high? Because they can. Did you guys see the story about the eggs thing? I haven't been following this shit. I just know that eggs somehow became like the thing that we all have to base our entire well-being on is the price of eggs. And apparently it was it's it's being investigated now that it was some big manufacturer, a big distributor of eggs that was marking up the prices and pocketing the difference. It's like every fucking day there's a new company that's finding some way or that we're discovering has found some way to just blatantly rip off consumers and when we decide oh you know what screw that company we're gonna go get our eggs somewhere else or whatever then it's something else that pops up there's something else that pops up that it's like oh now this company is trying to get a piece of that you know you didn't know the avian flu hit us chicken farmers? I mean, I heard about that. Yes, last year I heard about that. And that makes sense as why it could be contributing on one hand. But this other thing, this article that I'm talking about is a real article, a real issue. Um, it's collusion. Yeah, because law of laws in Canada is a mafia and that is gouging consumers uh, in grocery prices. I understand that's a uh, gamer. I understand that's that's this is your your angle on it. And, and I didn't know you're a chicken farmer, but um, I'm just telling you the article that I've read that you know, speaks to this stuff. So uh, that is what is pissed me off of Hogwarts Legacy when they announced P uh, PlayStation would get exclusive content. <laughs> Apparently, Avian Flu didn't actually hit the market uh, as the company claimed for the reason. Not as hard anyway. Well, some people may disagree, but it's time to move on. We can, we can talk about what came first all day. You're probably wrong once in a while. It's not me, man. It's like, you know, hundreds of people. It's like, guess <laughs> any excuse to make a butt yeah when companies are making like billions of dollars in profits more than they were making previously then i'm just gonna go ahead and say that they're probably gouging us some way probably record profits it's like oh shit well what about our money what about our costs of everything <clears throat> moving on moving on so this is uh this is a big one this is uh this is a big story um, well, it's, it's multiple stories, but it's a lot of stuff that's happening and it's happening very fast and it has to do with AI in multiple forms. So we'll start off with the visual form, <laughs> which is image <laughs> images. It's about layoffs. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, we're going to get into that too in a minute. So there was a lawsuit filed. We kind of briefly talked about this, uh, before we did news on Wednesday, uh, and I said I wanted to put this off until today. That way we could get it flushed out a little bit more. And I'm glad we did because we have more. So lawsuit filed against AI image generators, Stable Fusion, Stable Diffusion, sorry, and Mid Journey. Uh, and this this is just a filing so far. This is not the Getty Image lawsuit. That's a separate one. <laughs> <laughs> so this has everything to do with AI art, of course. Uh, AI art we know is a very controversial like thing right now it's very very controversial this image actually was generated by ai art um and i didn't realize i'd look i just glanced at it and scrolled down i maybe i didn't count the fingers oh this, is that even a hand i don't even know so uh it is controversial because of the uh, uh, uh of some of these uh uh data sets that they use to base these ai art images off of being uh, related to or being uh, scraped from real images that were taken, drawn, whatever, right? <clears throat> the way that the system, we're told, the way we're told the system works is that it doesn't copy the picture, it copies a uh, a, 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 a technical print kind of thing. It looks at it, it looks at the data, it looks at the ones and zeros, and it, 
it extrapolates from there what the image could look like, I guess, without actually saving the image. It sounds like a bunch of bullshit snake oil shit, right? So <clears throat> this is where this is where this kind of started to tumble for these guys. But Mid Journey's founder, David Holes, admitted in an interview with Forbes to using hundreds of millions of images without consent, sparking a backlash. So this is a Forbes article. <clears throat> I don't know if it's gonna let me look at it again, because I, I this is my third out of four. Uh, you only get like four articles for free, right? So this is three out of four. I don't know when that resets. Maybe it's annually. Sounds like capitalism. So you can say it studies uh, the art styles. That's what they say it does, right? I just realized I saw my sweater on my shoulder. Don't worry, it could just stay there. Uh, so this is the Forbes article they refer to. This is the person in question. This is Holtz. Uh, he's wearing his headphones in his corporate photo, which really rubs me the wrong way. There is something about this picture it's like, it makes me wonder, is this a real picture? <laughs> like, just, but you wear your headphones? Like, come on. <laughs> so, uh, I, they go on to ask us a question. You know, can you give a brief history of the, of the, uh, of the company to date? Uh, what does your mid, what does mid journey see as a benefit of this text to image technology as a business society? Uh, about how many people are using the product? Um, and it says here, it says, uh, let me find his actual quote here because they don't let me uh, copy paste or um, uh, copy the uh, highlight link. Oh, here we go. This is what I want to show you guys. Let's start here because this kind of like kind of draws a picture for you guys. So <laughs> draws a picture. Uh, Rob Sokowitz, a Forbes contributor, says, what's your role and title? Dave Holtz, Mid Journey, says, I'm the founder and CEO. I usually just prefer to being being called the founder, though, because CEO sounds very businessy and we're not very businessy. We're an applied research lab that makes products. That is such a, like a Silicon Valley style response. It, and, and then seeing the picture, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like we're really living in some Silicon Valley shit here. <laughs> Whole thing is AI made. It's still a ruse to advance AI, justify its own origin. Uh, I took some screenshots here of the uh, of the actuals because I didn't think I'd get access to it. So let's go refer to this here. So this is uh, from the same article. It says, did you seek consent from living artists or work still under copyright? And he said, no. Pretty much could just stop there, but we'll read the rest. There isn't really a way to get 100 million images and know where they're coming from. It would be cool if images had metadata embedded in them about the copyright owner or something, but that's not a thing. That There's not a registry. There's no way to find a picture on the internet uh, and then automatically trace it to the owner and then have any way of doing anything authenticated. So we just didn't do it. <laughs> there really isn't a good way to do it, so we just didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> like I say, peak Silicon Valley brain. Yeah, exactly. Startup bro level Omega. Jesus, tech yes. <clears throat> so much cursing. I'm not gonna be able. To, I'm not gonna be able to monetize this video. So he's saying flat out here. Now this article. When did this article come out? This article came out um, uh, September 16th, 2022. And from that is when we started to get these lawsuits there people were like what in the hell how flippantly you just said just describe stealing art basically not now nah, worry about that nah, there's no credit there's no way to do that so why even bother <laughs> not stealing is hard so we did yeah <laughs> sounds like actual useful uh use for the blockchain track independent artist copyright Ooh, uh huh better to do it and then ask for forgiveness however uh or whoever that thing said yeah it was like uh ask Ask questions later. Ask for forgiveness later. Yeah, I forget what it's called. But um, that's just Mid Journey. Okay. That's Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey. There is another, <laughs> there is another one that's going out. This one is from Getty Images. They're suing uh, Stable Diffusion also. <laughs> Yeah, easier to ask for, for for forgiveness than permission. There you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, so Getty Images is launching a legal action legal action against the creator of Stable Diffusion, claiming the AI generator infringed on its copyright. So this is kind of unique. Uh, it says here, and I'll just read it out loud here. This is the image. This is one of the images in question. Uh, it says Stable Diffusion's training data set is an open source. It's open source, uh, unlike OpenAI's Dolly. Uh, and analysis of the data set has found that content on stock photo websites constitutes a large portion of the data site. Da data set. Sorry. Uh, uh, Waxy sampled 12 million images from the 2.3 billion used to train Stable Diffusion and found that 15,000 of them came from Getty. It's worth noting that 12 million is less than 1% of 2.3 billion. I just want to throw that in there just so you get the math. But yeah, so Getty, you could see the damn Getty logo in here. 
<laughs> they had 15,000 images that they discovered when they went through their data set that came from their site. And so now Getty is uh, filing a lawsuit against them. They're suing them um, because, because not because they're scraping uh, the data, which obviously is a problem, but because uh, Getty has a license that is, um, they have a license that is specifically designed for this kind of research and it's known and available, but I guess our friend <laughs> who's not very businessy <laughs> has decided <laughs> ah, I don't need that. And now they're going to pay for it. So I don't know. Are they going to pay for it? Shit. I mean, they have a commercial license and all that stuff that they distribute. They're making, probably making good money. Shit. Uh, would an AI th uh, then think that there should be a watermark on every image if it's trained on images with watermarks? It should, yeah, it should. I mean, it's, I mean, it went, they went through a bunch of stock photos. And, and if you, if you use any of these AI generators, which I have used a, a, quite a few, well, not quite a few, but I've used at least a handful of them, especially mid journey, and a couple others. Um, most most of the other ones are like stable diffusion stuff. So uh, he has a very punchable face. Yeah. <laughs> but when you look at those, um, the images that come out that are generated, a lot of times you get what looks like movie posters that have been like bootlegged, you know, and remixed. And that's what you end up getting uh, is stuff like this. And this is a really good one. Actually flat out shows the Getty Images logo. There's a couple others floating around too. Um, yeah, this is the black color version, so. Keep teaching AI. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So, so. So that's a problem right now for stable diffusion, just AI generators in general. And keep in mind, they only know what's in this data set because it's available, right? Other generators don't have that stuff available. So who knows what kind of images are being fed to the other ones? You know, you know they're being fed, like, all kinds of stuff and they're just not going to say anything so was that the uh that one snl cast member that dated a bunch of celebs has the, that kind of face oh uh i can't think of his name because you just said it because <laughs> any other time of day i know this guy's name mr 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 steer your girlfriend pete davidson <laughs> that's right thank you top thank you top furthermore in the ai department there are other issues that are prop popping up this one's actually kind of funny. So AI chatbots, specifically chat GPT is causing a bit of a ruckus in a, in a couple of fields. And one of them is the education sector. So it says alarmed by AI chatbots, universities start revamping how they teach. So one of the quotes I pulled from this are gone are prompts like write fa five pages about this or that. Some professors are instead crafting questions that they hope will be too clever for chatbots and asking students to write about their own lives and current events, which which works because most students are not popular enough to have an entry <laughs> in, uh, in, in chat GPT. So this is where we're at right now with schools. They're trying to figure out how they can ban or well, in the in the case in this article, it actually details that um, colleges are not trying to ban it. They're trying to work with it and get creative with how they uh, approach their curriculum uh, in order to uh, basically create a situation where Chad GPT will not be quite as useful. Have them talk about their own personal lives. Another another example they gave in here was that they are going to have uh, that in some cases they'll have students write a draft in class. Right. <laughs> so that way they know and then they have to like talk about each revision. It just sounds like Chad GPT has made like school a hell of a lot more of a pain in the ass in high schools. Uh, according to this article, in some high schools, they've actually blocked, which I mean, that's like I'm sure there's tons of companies and businesses and schools that just, you know, they, they all just randomly block uh, sites like porn sites and all that uh, on their local network. Uh, schools have been doing that with Chad GPT, uh, high schools anyways, but it doesn't matter. Not every every kid's got. Every kid's got, you know, phone, <laughs> you know, phone. Stop making you write 10 to 20 pages of shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I helped found the Beatles, Paul McCartney class. Yeah. So schools are starting to take notice and they're like, hmm, should probably do something about that. Uh, 
businesses. I'm going to go click on this and see if I can get the actual article up. Because again, I'm, I, yeah, my limit on how many I can pull up. This is the Atlantic here. I don't want to subscribe. I just want to pull this up. I already got my quotes and everything. So this is about how ChatGPT will destabilize white collar work. I, I've already, I already feel like this is happening. It's just not spoken about, right? They're just not talking about it. Um, we're seeing, and, I, and I've already seen some of you guys have said, like Top, Top has mentioned that ChatGPT uh, can sometimes make a good peer programmer. It's not perfect. It fucks things up sometimes, but it could get a good basis for what you're trying to build and are structurally, and then it could provide it to you and you could go through and fill it out, which saves you time, which saves you a lot of time. The thing is, if you're working in an industry where that time is money, <laughs> then they're going to find that this could potentially destabilize that. Learn to code, they said. I know. <laughs> That's what you get for learning to code. Learn to weld. Learn the world, why not? Damn you, AI, yeah. White collar work, you mean those people who used to write all these things for lazy people? They engineered themselves out of a job, basically, right? As for school thing, they adapted to the calculator, they will adapt to this. Well, a calculator, they could just say, don't use your blank, right? Don't use, well, a calculator, you can go home and still use it. I sometimes try, I just don't use a calculator when helping Declan with his homework, so I guess you're right there. You can say what you want, plumbers will always be a necessary profession. I mean, okay, so let me let me finish with this. All right, so check this out. In the next five years, it is likely that AI will begin to reduce employment for college-educated workers as the technology continues to advance. It will be able to perform tasks that were previously thought to require a high level of, of education and skill. This could lead to a displacement of workers in certain industries. As companies look to cut, cut uh, as companies look to cost cuts, to cut costs by automating processes. While it is difficult to predict the exact extent of this trend, it is clear that AI will significantly impact uh, the job market for college educated workers. So yeah, this is, I mean, it's, <laughs> it does seem plausible. It does seem, pl I've, I've used chat, uh, uh, chat GPT a lot. I've used it quite a bit, just like little things, you know, just like little things. I'll uh, write this quick little thing, like a paragraph, like I, for the Max Verstappen th story that we did on Wednesday, I wanted a quick little paragraph just so I could read that out for anybody who doesn't know who that is, right? Something that was concise. It didn't quite get everything as, you know, somebody had said, but uh, 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 like robots was doing artists and like code writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't think that your blue collar jobs are safe because we got robots for that shit too. We watched this the other day. If you missed it, this is the new, the new and improved <laughs> acrobatic version of the uh, of the of the robot, whatever Boston Dynamics robot taking over the world. Yeah, just gonna slap an AI in one of these bitches. You done? It's over. It'll be down to how expensive it'll be for companies to use, and I'm sure it'll come down to licenses. I'm sure it'll probably not be more expensive than paying for somebody's entire yearly sal salary and benefits and vacation and all kinds of other taxes and fees. And also uh, you got to give them a place to work, probably supply them computers and all that stuff. I'm pretty sure none of that stuff is going to be a problem for them to, uh, uh, to set aside if they could just pay a licensing fee <laughs> and just let the AI do it. Uh, this is the part right here though. That got me. So yeah, we did. <laughs> the 180 is so unnecessary. Yeah, it's all for combat military. Yeah, just showing off, just showing off. So yeah, yeah. why you think that, I mean, it's funny. It's like learn to code. Now it's like, well, learn to weld. It's like, well, I mean, robots do that shit already, you know, and then you're going to have a, a, another robot that's going to just ha basically be the moving everything around like a person would. It's crazy. You not prepare? I was not prepared for that. Uh, that that move also. I freaked out when I saw that. Shit. Then make it do work. Then hit a nail with a hammer. I mean, it will. Except it's gonna do it faster than a than a human can. It and it won't take breaks. I mean, it's gonna need to be like charged and all that. But like I said, I did say this the other day. How long? Like someone mentioned, uh, how long before they go for like construction or something? And I think that's still a long way off because construction equipment is like, I mean, it is like over-engineered, right? Not all of it, but a lot of it is because it's designed to be used in the harshest of conditions, dust and dirt and shit all over the place. Like it's designed to work in those conditions. These machines are not. So while this demonstration is great, you could see, oh, it threw, it threw the tool bag up there. It did all that, did a backflip and all that stuff. This is a, this is a spotless environment compared to what, 
uh, what exists on any construction site. Porn hackers will always be necessary. Will they? Will they? <laughs> will they? <laughs> I don't know, man. We have AI image generators right now. Who's to say they're not going to start moving? You know, they just, they just generate 30 frames a second. And now we have movies. It's going to happen, man. Porn actors playing pl plumbers will never die out. There we go. There we go. That's something that's never going anywhere. That's a staple. That's a staple. Uh, yeah, they were using Chad for, for hacking. Oh, boy. Uh, they just, so they just put this in a different exoskeleton. I mean, it's, it's more than that, though. Like, every, every servo on this thing, every joint, every motor on this thing is designed to work with what it, what it is, how it's built, how it's engineered. It needs to have this balance. If you were to now change that to make it stronger, more seals, better quality, durable cables, hoses, all that stuff, making it safe for workers. Now you're adding weights, tons of weights. You have to restructure how the whole thing works, right? Not just the whole thing, but still, like maybe the humanoid humanoid form factor is not the best for a uh, for a work site. Maybe they'll bring the dogs out or something. I don't know. <laughs> ChatGPT was being used by scammers to create code and better scam emails. Oh, I bet. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like the days of getting, uh, getting these like terrible English, um, uh, uh, spam emails that are like very obvious. It's basically over. Don't be the miner with a gold claim. Be the guy selling pans and pickaxes to all the miners. Yeah, I haven't heard that in a long time. Imagine like hundred, like 150 years. <laughs> Imagine one of those heavy ass bots doing a roof. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, flashback, flashback to Tesla's robot reveal a couple months ago. God damn, that was that was uh, that just disappeared, didn't it? That just completely disappeared. That was a joke. I am the UK government. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly that. Uh, this is uh, this is also related. This is part of uh, OpenAI. So this is a story that came out on Time Time dot com. Uh, it says exclusive. OpenAI used Kenyans Kenyan workers on less than two dollars per hour to make Chat GPT less toxic. And so I mean I have a lot of of text from this because as I was reading it I was like dang like it mean I mean dang but also like it's 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 not so much the content. Uh, because I'm sure some of it's stuff that's going to be sticking with some of these folks, like in a bad way, PTSD re related stuff, as happens with like anybody who works in any kind of content moderation, right? They're all scarred for life. Um, but it's the way that the rates had worked for this. So let me, let me, let me go and uh, let me go read this part here. It says chat GPT's predecessor, uh, GPT three had already shown an impressive ability to string sentences together, but it was a diff it was a difficult sell as the app was also prone to blurting out violent, sexist and racist remarks. This is because the AI had been trained on hundreds of billions of words scraped from the internet a vast repository of human language. This is what happened to, uh, to, uh, Sama. What was her name? Open. What are the, the AI waifu, uh, streamer that we had Sama something, I think I can't remember, but I mean, it's basically what happened. They, they, they learn too much. They don't know how to handle that information. <laughs> so open AI sent tens of thousands of snippets uh, of text to an outsourcing firm in Kenya beginning in November 2021. Much of that text appeared to have been pulled from the darkest recesses of the internet. Some of it described situations in graphic, graphic detail like child child abuse, bestiality, murder, suicide, torture, self-harm, and, and, and incest. Excuse me, I'm not going to $20 a year, man. Uh, it's all text, but what they needed, they needed uh, what they call natural language processing, which is where they have a human read it and then say, okay, this is child abuse. Okay, this is assault. This is, and then they send it back. And they had to do like 70, 70 lines or 70 uh, snippets per hour or something like that. And they ranges from a hundred to like a thousand words. So the kind of ranges. Um, See, according to a quick search, two dollars is two hundred forty-eight Kenyan shillings. The average hourly wage in Kenya is eight hundred. Yeah, so still not true AI. Well, they had to they had to feed it somewhere along the lines. It's the human on the other end. It's the same thing for the art side, right? It just it didn't just imagine all this stuff out of thin air. Like it needed to see examples. It needed to scrape examples, and then it creates a noise layer to create all of that all that beautiful all that beautiful AI art that we see everywhere. <laughs> 
So it says here, it says, one Sama worker tasked with reading and labeling text in OpenAI told Time that he suffered from recurring visions after reading graphic description of a man having sex with a dog in the presence of a child. That was torture, he said. You will read a number of statements like that all throughout the week. By the time it gets to Friday, you are disturbed from thinking through that picture. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's like every everybody that works in content moderation, you know, but they're getting paid pennies on the dollar. It's humans putting themselves out of work. In 30 years, some enterprise in Kenyan is going to set up a space agency and colonize the moon. Don't believe me? Read Andy Weir's Artemis. So, this is not like... <laughs> so, the contracts, it was a low... Sama is a local company. Well, local. Uh, it's here in San Francisco. Sama is a company here in San Francisco that OpenAI uh, contracted... And Sama is, their business model is they mostly hire uh, 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 employees in Kenya and in, uh, I think, Uganda and maybe another country, maybe Rwanda, I'm not sure. But they, uh, that's basically their job. And so the contracts that Time had seen said that OpenAI would pay an hourly rate of $12.50 to Sama for the work. So they would pay them $12.50, but the actual employees were only getting $2.00 maybe max how much is two usd relative to the well as as it was just said uh whiskey joe just says according to quick search two dollars is 248 kenyan shillings the average hourly wage in kenya is 800 so yeah it's it's already it's below i don't know if they have a minimum wage or whatever but it's still below what they would normally i guess what the average human uh, uh wages uh it says here that uh, the $12, this is a this is a quote from the company. It said the $12.50 rate for the project covers all costs like infrastructure expenses, salary and benefits for the associates and their fully dedicated quality assurance uh, assurance analysis, analysts and team leaders. So $10 of that $12.50 went towards all that other stuff. That just sounds like some bullshit. <laughs> so, so they're busted, right? They're busted on February 17th, which is last year, uh, when the first article started, uh, I guess the first article started, started uh, circulating around like Facebook or something like that. It says that uh, Sama CEO Wendy Gonzalez sent a message to the group of senior executive, executives via Slack and said, we're going to start winding down the open AI work. It took a year. That was February 17th. We're not February 17th yet. That was 2022. 2023, January 10th, this year. It says Sama went a step further in announcing that it was canceling all the rest of its work with sensitive content. And the firm said that it would not renew its $3.9 million content moderation contract with Facebook. It already stopped work with OpenAI, and now they're going to be canceling their service entirely. So um, look under that picture. The hustle is real. Oh, yeah, this is this is, uh, this is is an image generated uh, or AI generated uh, image. All these articles about AI art use, uh, use images like this or AI period. Uh, it's the company that took the deal is pocketing 1050. Absolutely. I mean, they're probably paying something for like overhead. There's definitely going to be some kind of brick and mortar or whatever they call it, like overhead, you know, um, commercial leases, all that stuff. But to say that they needed $10 of that $12 is absurd. Absurd. Get it one year of time for 1999. I know. <laughs> Man, it's like 10 hours of work. <laughs> like 10 hours of work in Kenya, Jesus Christ. So, so there's this whole thing like really paints a picture for like how how AI stuff works. We already knew that AI image generators were based off of it scraping uh art assets that it found on the internet in various forms. Uh chat a chat gpt ai you know that stuff goes somebody has to go through and figure out what's racist and what's what's not you know someone's got to eyeball that and say yeah this is that this is that in order to teach it because apparently it's not going to teach itself i don't understand why i don't know why it can't just read wikipedia and just come out and be like all right now i know maybe that's a bad idea i don't know is that a bad idea to feed it too much information <laughs> Ten dollars a fifty hour per employee. How many people are doing the work? Fifty. Uh, it was uh, in total they had two hundred jobs, but I think they did say that there was like fifty or seventy people or something that was assigned to this job. Um, AI would think all of us humans are bad. Yeah, yeah. That's forty thousand dollars a day. It easily covers the overhead. Exactly. Yes. That's probably one of the reasons why they started shutting things down and breaking out of doing those contracts and everything because they were getting busted. Uh, the first psychopath AI AI. The powered psychopath we present you norman oh geez norman is born from the fact that the data is, is used to teach a machine learning algorithm can significantly influence behavior oh shit 
Uh, use that shit today to write a bash, a bash script. Mundane things are amazing with it. Yeah, it is really good at that stuff. It really is, but you should still be informed of like where it comes from, where the data comes from, and also the potential like the impact that it could have on, I mean, on your job. You know, we don't have a system in place to support us if we ever get like put out of a job in mass because chat AI is taking over a bunch of positions. Um, and I understand there's folks that will say, oh, that'll never happen. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. It, that's the whole point. The whole point is we're not doing this so that people can just have fun and like make cool fanfics. No, they're doing this because they see a, a financial, a, a actual money value. There's fiscal value, value here in getting all this stuff done and getting all this data out and figuring out a way to, to use it to do work. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't have a job, so I'm there already. <laughs> oh, my fan fix. <laughs> Chat GPT doesn't talk back, shows up to work in time, doesn't need doesn't need a break. Doesn't need a break, you know? Worry not, you'll always have a job for powering up the matrix. I mean, tuh. wouldn't that be wouldn't that be something? Like you go to work every day and they just plug you in, they just siphon away your life juices or whatever. I don't know how it works. <laughs> All the electricity our body makes and shit. The day humanity stops caring about personal wealth is the day Star Trek becomes more of a reality. Yeah, Star Trek has a right. No, the Federation, no currency. Um, everything is provided for you. You don't have to worry about, you know, a lot of stuff. Now, that's an extreme example, right? Um, what we're looking at now, which is probably going to become a necessity soon, is just universal basic income for people. Uh in 20 years time, like we could easily see tons and tons of jobs just disappear because they're automated, right? 20 years ago, the world was a different place. Factories were a different place, right? There's tons of people who are, I mean, if you work anywhere near a factory or ever worked in a factory, look at all the machines around you. Those used to be people. Those used to be tens of people doing those jobs. It's only a matter of time before we end up engineer, engineering ourselves out of a job, out of income. It's gonna happen. So you uh, you go you go med and have GPT instance all the monitors, all the customers face easy clap. Everyone working in start. Everyone is working in start. So they're working for the greater good. They probably have a job. I don't know how that works. <laughs> you just get to the brains, the AI for work. The AI uses our brains as the largest CPU. Connect to AI eight hours a day for your daily pay. I mean, there's there's some Black Mirror episodes that kind of run along these lines here. So someone working in games currently, Artside Mycopium is asking if the solution is to advertise and support all human products to the best of our ability. Woo, man, that's a tough one. Uh, the solution, I mean, the reality is AI art is only going to get better. It's, it's comical right now. And we will remember these times of AI art being comical, right? Because they will eventually fix the fingers. They'll fix the teeth. They'll fix all that stuff. And so then we're going to be faced with real problems, not just not just in like mid journeys, you know, fantasy style of, of rendering and production, but also in like real life stuff. And as a matter of fact, this is a great transition, great transition into our next story here. Uh, live deep fakes like are actually a thing. There's an app for this. <laughs> Computers were a mistake. That's the real problem. So check this out. This is um, this is Keanu Reeves. <laughs> You're breathtaking. That's Nim, streamer. We got more. That's Keanu Reeves. Here's uh. She called Harley Quinn. Here's Margot Robbie. Yeah, my beard ruins all of these girl faces. It's hard to tell because of the hair, but that's the face. Like, and it's live. Here's one. Here's one that's undeniable. You could say it doesn't look like it, but undeniable. Different user two drives. Dude. This. This is a problem. <laughs> that's so this good. is a problem. Uh, I'll bean do on a... bean action. <laughs> this is an app called uh called deep fakes sorry deep face live that just scares it way more than the ai yeah and just so you know this is not this is not necessarily ai this is just 
deep fakery. Uh, but it could tie into all that stuff once you get, you know, the AI to write the script and to do the voice. We've already seen AI voices. This is why validation mechanics will become stronger. Blue check marks on crack. Yeah. Mike, you should do this. Okay, so I did try to do this. I did try, I did try to install this app. Uh, but I ran into an issue, and I'll show you guys. Uh, it actually installs Chi Engine, and I don't know if it's something I want to necessarily like try to do. <laughs> I'm not gonna try to risk it, but it installs Chi Engine, so I was like, ah, I'm just not gonna do it. So I just said, fuck it. Um, <laughs> it's too much of a risk, man. That's normal, sure. I'm just not gonna do it. <laughs> But check it out. Check it out. They have a whole list of faces that you could try if you want. If you want to risk it, you'd be fine. You could be Lucy Liu. You could be Jessica Biel, Bruce Willis. You could be Ariana Grande. I mean, you know how these are going to be used. Let's not, let's not try to PG this. <laughs> It'll be malware because hacking tools. Yeah. Uh, we also have Jack Septic Guy. We have uh, Markiplier. We have our good friend. <laughs> and he even gives the details. Here's the face heat map. Here's all the different images that it uses, the face at preview. Um, and what it does is it works in real time to replace your face with this. I'm not on the list. I looked. I'm not on the list. But. You can uh, you can upload your own face if you want. So you can set it up to uh, put your own face on there. But does it have Randy? No. Now, did people did uh, the people give permission for this app? I assume the app can be sued. You assume, but there's a lot of weird laws around this stuff. It's, 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 is it illegal to use? Or does it have to be used in a way that's illegal? That I think that's kind of the problem that we're seeing is that we don't know how to approach that, right? No one has the energy of Linus. Yeah, for reals. That's old Linus. New Linus has a beard. He had to grow that beard out to, to trick all the AI. <laughs> yeah. the, the beard is a decoy. <laughs> uh, this is, I mean, here's just another example of, this has popped up on Wall Street Bets. And this is a thing. I'm seeing it everywhere. I'm seeing it everywhere. This isn't even like deep face live. This is just deep fake in general, deep fakery. Check this out. And there's some there's some crude language here. Just be warned. Crude language. Crude language, but it's Wall Street bets. So I don't know what else you're really expecting to hear. So what the fuck did you just fucking say about out of the money FDs, you little bitch? I'll have you know I graduated bottom of my class in the special needs division of the Navy SEALs, and I've been bag holding from pump and dumps on Wall Street bets since 2012. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of errors in this one for sure. Margin calls. But still, I am trained in the this is like I'm the top retard. This is like United one States. person who's just like doing this in his free time. One person doing this in the free time. They also did uh, Jerome Powell. Who? And this one was actually better. Hi, I'm, I'll mute this one because I don't know what Thanks. he's going to say. Shit. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's like this is this random person on WSB. Just whipping up some deep fakes. No problem. Saying some outlandish stuff. How long until Reddit nukes WSB? I mean, it's a major, major, major. Uh, well, wait, no. With all the BS that WSB has done in the past... It's going to take a lot more than this. <laughs> It'll take a lot more than this to uh, uh, to take them down. All right, so much of this video might be worth a watch after news is done. Ooh, okay. Uh, it was banned once already, or was it Discord? I don't know. What is this video? I'm curious. Hey, man. I secretly replaced my co-host with AI. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, I could, oh, wait. I could replace my co-host with AI? What? <laughs> a lot of porn is made with deep fakes. <gasps> what? Where? On what sites? You gotta be kidding me. What links do you have to examples of this so that I can inspect this because I cannot believe that this is actually happening. <laughs> yes, there's actually uh, sites dedicated to deep fake porn. And it's always, and that's why I said, you know where this is going when you see on the front page, you have Lucy Lou, you have uh, Scar, you got two Scar Joes, so you know, you know it's gonna be some. You got Jake's Jake Sully Avatar, you know it's gonna be some kinky stuff going on. 
<laughs> he said we could talk after the show. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely a um it's been a thing. It has already been a thing. Uh it's just now getting to the point to where deep fakes doing a deep fake video on uh on an existing porn video to superimpose a celebrity's face onto it takes you know time processing a lot of examples of faces all that stuff the examples that i really want you guys to uh, the thing i really want you guys to understand here is that this is the next level this is doing it live actually doing it live this is not recorded and then later they processed it real time and it's only going to get better 100 percent going to get better this time next year it's going to make this look like a joke it's going to make this look like a joke Porn is going to obviously take off with deep fakes because now they could just record it live. There's already filters that people use in adult content, like, you know, like regular Instagram or uh, Snapchat or whatever type filters, TikTok filters, um, being on being porn. If you're into that kind of thing, it's really creepy to look at. Uh, this is going to kill the VTuber stuff. It might. I mean, no, 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 no. It's not going to kill the VTuber stuff. Uh, how much international politics is done over video links? How long before this pranks, some pranks or starts World War Three? I mean, as as was mentioned, uh, it is it's going to require a lot of checks. Basically, it's going to be a lot of uh, authentication. It'll probably be something like it's just a joke, bro. No, 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 no. But it's worth mentioning, though. It's worth mentioning because there there's uh, uh, didn't we see? Wait, wasn't there? There was a Black Mirror episode on this, I think. Not was it deep fakes or was it? It was like a fake politician or something. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, many uh, sites ban deepfakes. Yes, it's true. A lot of a lot of sites do ban deepfakes, uh, but that's just if the sites are located in a country where they, you know, they ban those things. There's plenty of sites, plenty of popular porn sites that are not, you know, based in any country that has those kind of uh, laws. Uh, <laughs> it's just is it just a joke, bro? Going to lead to more problems than actual tech? Yeah. A fake politician like Santos? Oh, we came full circle. <laughs> the weaves don't care about 3D people, only 2D. That's true. Yeah, that's true, actually. They do like that 2D, the moving PNGs and whatnot, you know? So, as it stands right now, just to wrap up the AI slash deepfakes slash chat GPT, images, stable diffusion, all that stuff, like this stuff is accelerating fast. Like we're seeing use of chat GPT by the average normie picking it up, using it to write something that they need for whatever uh, you can feed it information and then then ask it questions off that based off the information and basically and learn and have it learn how certain systems work. You know, it's a very complex and very cool system. <laughs> like It really is. But it's also eventually going to permeate enough uh of our, of our industries where it's going to start putting people out of jobs uh just wait till vr gets all this they already have like vr headsets that track your eyes so the avatars just add that much more realism you pay for it, it's cheap as fucking worth every penny if we have a chat gpt to become api to become vi available yeah it is chat gpt is, is is amazing i i recommend everybody at least try it if you haven't tried it it will blow your mind the first time you do it like ask it a question that requires like a nuanced answer. It may not get the answer a hundred percent right. Most of the time it does. <laughs> it may not get the answer hundred percent right, but you will be amazed at like how much detail it's able to put together in uh in a in a block of text basically. Uh it's it's uh go to openai.com and you'll see a link to chat GPT and you can click on that and go in from there. It taught me so much, uh it taught me some trigonometry math I needed the other day. Yeah, I used it. I I used it to. Uh, oh man, here's something I used it for. Uh, I was like throwing out random video ideas for my next video essay, and one of the ideas I threw it was actually a quote that I use. Not quote, but it's something that I. It's a. Uh, it's an example that I use whenever I'm talking to somebody when they ask me questions about the games industry and my knowledge of the games industry. Right when they're like, "How much? How much of this?" Uh, uh, how, what can like what what do you know what do you learn about games like over this time what do you learn it's like well one of the examples i give is there's i i can name you know seven or eight different types of inventories right which i feel like is a very it's a very obscure stupid stat 
But really, when you look at like a breakdown of different types of inventories used in video games over the last like 20, 30, 40 years, like there's a number of them, you know, there's like stacks, there's weight, there's shape, there's all kinds of stuff. And so I asked it, I was like, there's no way it's going to get this right. And I asked, I said, can you give me a list of different inventories? And it fucking gave me a list like of like 11 different inventory types. And I was like, man, that's my line. <laughs> like that's my that's an obscure fact that like that i know like that i like to use with people and it's just like oh yeah here's a list oh you forgot some <laughs> so yeah it's it is it's scary how how uh smart it can seem but and right now i don't know is there any like downsides to using it right is there any downsides to use besides I me mean, if you go to school you're not supposed to right <laughs> But it's it's helping people right now. I feel like it's helping people do be more productive. For me, for example, give me an outline for like generic video X. Boom, 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 boom. Outline, perfect. Now I can write my script and it fits in all these little. You know, it's like first talk about the product, second show the product. You know, like little things like that. And it's like you lay it out, like fill in the blanks. AI answering obscure questions isn't that just I, I can, what is that? It might be an eventual replacement by AI. The downside is that it seems to agree with everything you say. If you tell it that 10 plus 10 equals 25, it agrees with you. And it is very confidently wrong. Is that true? Let's see how to film with some adult content. I will say it really, really, really does not like it when I ask it questions about adult content stuff. It will answer, sometimes it'll answer the question, but then it'll pop up a little warning and it turns your text orange. Okay. So it's a boop and it's all like, whoa. Is this, is this naughty? Click here and let us know if it is or not, right? But you don't have to do it. But what happens is if you keep ask, asking it naughty questions, eventually it'll just say, I'm sorry, I don't think I could help you with this. Maybe you could ask me another question. <laughs> it's just scary, man. <laughs> uh, see, well, we have uh, uh, AI is prude. Yeah, it's prude. Yeah, it's prude. It's definitely prude. So I was asking you uh, if you need to send that question to some unfortunate Kenyan. Uh, uh, last, lastly, last up, last up, last up. Factorio increased price by five dollars to match inflation. A game that never goes on sale. But we're not going to talk about that. That was just kind of a silly thing. <laughs> last up, this is a fun one. I try to say some fun ones. This one is actually from Austin. Austin is uh, one of my Twitter field reporters. Um, basically just sends me links to articles and stuff like that that might be relevant some of the stories that i've talked about here was from the, from austin uh he's at funny enough at future ai 10 uh on twitter uh sent me this link a couple weeks ago i totally forgot to show you guys but oh my god oh my god it's it's amazing so this person is in uh unity oh, damn it ah, this person is in unity and they got doomed to work in unity but not just in Unity. You got to work in the Inspector. Check this out. Very useful game object. Doom components. Doom. <laughs> so if you need another place to play Doom, <laughs> there's a GitHub link available for you. I'll drop it in chat if you're interested. It plays it pretty good too, actually. <laughs> All right. Oh, Reddit. Oh, Reddit. Just, 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 just die. All right. That's it for the news. Thank you so much. Catch up with some chat here. That final line between AI assisted tools and AI job replacement is something a lot of us games and games talk about. Mm, still need to get the fridge with the screen so I can play Doom there. Ah, see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, on that, on that note though, with AI assisted tools, AI job replacement stuff, I and mean, we've already seen that happen with High on Life. High on Life talked about they used AI art assets in some instances, right? Uh, in a lot of instances, actually, like posters and stuff. Uh, and in one instance with AI voice, and then they ended up uh, uh, changing that later. So, whoo! Oh, this is your example. Here you go. AI ten plus ten equals twenty five. Yeah, there you go. Ten plus eight equals twenty five. No, no equals twenty. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> is it insane rant by, by adam sessler that's why I, I muted him because he's always ranting <laughs> always and while i agree with a lot of his points i don't need to hear it all the time this dude is mad all the time jesus that's it for the news chat you guys are amazing thank you again for being here for the news youtube you could be here too you could be we're gonna watch some porn after this 
Yeah. Have a good one. Chat, hang out for a second, okay?